I'm ready to get my heart broken again. And we're going to preview ASU versus Cal. And maybe I'm too hopelessly optimistic, but we'll talk about it on this edition of the Locked on Sun Devils. Podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Wherever you get your content, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You can stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter. You can find me at richiebrads 36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. And again, thank you guys, as always, for tuning in, making us your first listen of the day. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. We are playing Cal tomorrow and as i sit here recording this and i hesitated to record because i was going back and forth and i wanted to make sure that i was all in on this before i put this episode together and i'm i'm all in i am all in on this prediction uh whether we win or lose we'll go ahead and get to that towards the end of the podcast but as per usual with our game day previews we're going to take a look at the offense and defensive side of the football for Arizona State, we're going to take a look at some players to watch for California in this case, and then we'll do some bold predictions and a score prediction at the end of the podcast. We'll go ahead and start with the offensive side of the football, and it continues to be a revolving door at the quarterback position. Drew Pine is out for the foreseeable future with more injuries that are mounting up. Uh, it's it's it, it's not fun. The only good news is Trenton Borgay is back, so. At least we have a guy who we're familiar with. We have a guy who we know what he brings to the table. He is someone that can effectively run the offense. Somebody who's able to get the ball to his playmakers and is prone to mistakes and doesn't necessarily open up everything in the offense, right? He is a limited player. He's not an elite player, but you could certainly do a lot worse. And more than anything, he's a fan favorite. I know... A lot of you in my comments love Trenton Borgay. And it should be noted that I love Trenton Borgay. I have mentioned before, I wish that he would have a Jake Plummer senior season. Well, you know, he's Redshirt Jr., but neither here nor there. I love Trenton Borgay. But it is important to understand he has limitations. Moving on from there, this is. This is going to be a team that is going to benefit from Borgay being the starter because he has the familiarity with these guys. There was always going to be some growing pains with Jaden Rashada or with Drew Pine. But now you have Borgay starting. Forced or not, Borgay is starting. And he knows Elijah Badger and he knows Jalen Conyers, the two, two arguably most talented players on this offense. He knows these guys. He has had a whole offseason to work in the Kenny Dillingham system. He has had some time getting live reps in the game, although not very many. And he's also had some time on the sidelines to kind of soak everything in. So going into this, we should feel comfortable to a certain extent with Borgay being the starter. I'm not saying you go into this game and you expect him to throw 300 yards and you expect him to throw five touchdowns, whatever especially because Cal's got a pretty solid defense. This is not the game that we should anticipate him to light up the scoreboard. What you are hoping to see out of him is just to be that game manager that we've come to know and figure it out. As long as you can find a way to move the ball efficiently on offense and minimize mistakes, you'll be fine. We've been saying it for weeks on this podcast. We're going to continue to say it no matter who the quarterback is, but With a full game of Borgay now, hopefully, you know, barring injury, knock on wood, with a full game of Borgay, it'll be really interesting to see how this offense ends up running. And on the topic of the offense running, Kenny Dillingham is still going to be calling plays, or at a minimum, he's going to have a very large influence, the same way that he was this past week against USC. Look at the success that they had on offense. Is that going to replicate? That's where I'm really interested to see what's going on. Is this going to continue to be an offense that pushes the envelope 
way past its capabilities. Like, what are you looking to do? That'll be really intriguing to watch in this in this game tomorrow is to see what Kenny Dillingham has planned, what he wants to accomplish, what he what he wants to test and see if you can do it or you can't do it, whatever. That'll be interesting. Defensively, you know, at, at the end of the day, the storyline every single week until it happens is going to be turnovers. I understand we had a fumble recovery last week. We technically have a turnover this year. But if we are being honest, that was not forced. That was not a forced turnover. That was a botched snap. The quarterback and running back had a miscommunication. Balls on the ground, ASU fell on top of it. It's a turnover, but it's not a forced turnover. So when is it that they're finally going to force a turnover? Like I said, and until it happens, this feels like it's going to be the story every week for the defense. And this is going to be the story once again. And we look at the California uh, passing attack, and they're susceptible to turnovers. They have had two quarterbacks who we're going to talk about who have combined for six interceptions this year. There's opportunity here to get the turnovers. Is this a game? Who knows? Uh, I certainly hope so. Spoiler alert. I'm done predicting it. When we get to my bold predictions, I am not predicting turnovers anymore. No, no matter if we go three more games without a turnover, you're not going to see me every week go, oh, we're going to get a turnover. I'm done with that. I'm done with it. I'll wait for it to happen. And when it happens, maybe the next week, I'll be like, oh, we're going to get two turnovers. Cross that bridge when we get to it. But spoiler alert, I'm not predicting turnovers anymore for the foreseeable future. But we're looking for the turnovers, and we're looking to see how the defensive line is able to step up. Uh, Cal has had a very good unit that has been able to really, really minimize the amount of sacks that they've given up. They've only allowed four sacks, or excuse me, five sacks on the year. Uh, there's been 148 pass attempts, so they're having a very, very successful season and making sure their quarterbacks stay upright, even if the quarterbacks aren't necessarily making the best decisions. But the Sun Devils defense has really come alive, especially in the pass rush there. You've seen Prince Dorba, who was just absolutely dominated. You've seen BJ Green show up. You've seen the secondary get involved. Like They're dialing up all sorts of pressure. So... In, in a very, very small sense. It's an unstoppable force that meets an immovable object. Obviously, in this sense, it's 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 just a saying. I am not I am not saying that California's offensive line is the best in the country or that Arizona State's defensive uh pass rush is the best in the country. That's not what I'm saying. But it is in this extent, in this circumstance. An unstoppable force in the Sun Devils pass rush that has been really hot the last four weeks versus an immovable object with the with the California offensive line. Curious how that works. And especially when you've got quarterbacks that even with only getting sacked five times have thrown six interceptions. Think about that for a second. They have thrown more interceptions than they have allowed sacks this year. That's an opportunity. That's an opportunity that you need to capitalize on. Hopefully the Sun Devils are able to find something to do with that. Offensively, really curious what they're going to do with Kenny Dillingham and with Trenton Borgay under center again. Defensively, I am equally as curious to see if this pass rush is going to be able to find a way to get home or at the end of the day, you know, just find a way to make this game a little bit easier for everybody else because if the if the defense isn't able to get anything going then I just I feel like this is going to end up being a very long game for the Sun Devils the the offense could be there or it might not be there if that's the case no matter what the case is the Sun Devils are probably going to be winning this game off of the backs of their defense Men, losing your hair is inevitable, and it's time to take control of your hair's future with Nutrafol's science-backed hair growth supplement for men. Did you know that 80% of men have experienced hair thinning in their lifetime? It is normal, and it doesn't have to be your fate. You can get ahead of it with Nutrafol. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist-recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. 
Go to Nutrafol.com slash men to take their hair health wellness quiz. Identify causes of your thinning hair, and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair health through whole body wellness. And it works. It's it, it's clinically studied, guys. 84% of men showed improvement in their hair after six months of taking Nutrafol men's hair growth supplements. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. Find out why 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men. Enter the promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. Again, that's Nutrafol.com slash men. Promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. Speaking of Locked On, if you guys are looking for the best coverage for college football, then every Friday you need to go and check out the Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. They go live every Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On College YouTube channel. That includes Locked On Sun Doubles. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Locked On can, including insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every day. Find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on any Locked On College YouTube channel. You won't want to miss it. I promise you it's the best coverage you're going to find. Let's go ahead and flip to the other team here and talk about the Cal Golden Bears. This is this is a sneaky good team. They sit on year two and two. They, they have not won a... Pac-12 game, but they're two and one and out of conference. They very easily could have been three and zero because they were in a slugfest with Auburn. Got the doors blown off them last week against Washington. We can call that call that as it is. Washington is I have been on record best team in the conference. They are going to want to enforce their will on Arizona State. It. Inflict, I can't remember. I can't remember the actual term. But point is, they're going to want some revenge after a 59-32 to beatdown last week against Washington. And there are some guys on this team that are going to be able to help them do that. Uh, their run game, as a, as a whole team, super dynamic. They have combined for nearly 900 rushing yards, which if you take away the 42 yards from sacks, they're over 900. They're over 900 rushing yards. You take away the sacks. They're well over five yards carry and a flat five, even with the sacks and have 11 touchdowns of four games. They get it done on the ground. And the guy that absolutely gets it done for them is Jade Knott. This dude was one of the best running backs in the conference last year as a true freshman. Him and Damian Martinez over at Oregon State, like, no pun intended, run the Pac-12 when it comes to the running back position. It is truly those two, and then it feels like it's kind of like up in the air who the next guy is. Like, obviously, we say it's Cameron Scadaboo, the people's running back. But it, it really is. It's Jaden Knott, Damian Martinez, and whichever order you want to put him in, and then everybody else. And if I'm forgetting somebody, then sue me. I know Bucky Irving is really good, okay? Jay Knott is great, and he is the one that you have to find a way to game plan against. I don't know that this is a guy that you can stop. I don't want to say that you can only contain him because I don't think he is like. See, I'm kind of I'm kind of going over myself right now. He is a very great player. I won't say that he's one of the best players in the nation. How about that? I don't think that you look at Jade Knott and you go, well, if we hold him to 100 yards, it's a win. No, because your goal should be to hold him well under well under 100 yards, probably out of the end zone, under five, maybe even under four yards of carry. He's not a Derrick Henry kind of guy where it's like, we'll minimize him. You want to do everything you can to eliminate Jade Knott from the game plan. 
in order to do that, you need your run defense to step up. And the Sun Devils run defense has been pretty suspect this year. There's been some highs and there's been some lows. They are right smack dab in the middle of the conference in rushing yards allowed per game. They are sitting as the seventh team in the in the Pac-12 in rushing yards per game. Although there is quite a difference between seventh and sixth place. Funny enough, sixth place is Cal. But there's been some highs and there's been some lows with the Sun Devils run defense. You're really hoping that this is going to be a game that they rise to the occasion, especially when you look at what Cal does offensively. Like, it's not just him. It's Isaiah Afonzi. It's Ashton uh, Stredick. One of their quarterbacks, Sam Jackson, is able to run as well. And you know what? I, I feel like that's a good transition here because I, I can't just talk about Jaden not forever. Sam Jackson is one of their quarterbacks, but they also have Ben Finley. And those two have each attempted at least 68 passes this year. Uh, Sam Jackson was the flashy transfer coming in from TCU. Ben Finley is a sophomore. Yes, sophomore. He also transferred from NC State. Not as flashy the transfer as Sam Jackson was, but they are in the middle of a quarterback controversy similar to ASU, but subtract the injuries. They are, it's almost like Oklahoma State where it feels like it's a quarterback by committee. How is Arizona State going to adjust to this? Like, are have you learned from your mistakes? Have you learned what you did wrong against Oklahoma State and plan to correct it this time around? I certainly hope so. Because no matter who's under center, whether it's Sam Jackson, whether it's Ben Finley, you need to have some kind of plan that you're going to execute to get the job taken care of. Defensively, I, I didn't really notice anyone who stood out too much to me, but there is one name in particular, and it's Jackson Sermon. Sermon is actually somebody that I have talked about before on this podcast, but a long time ago, like early days of the podcast, back when I had a co-host, I talked about Jackson Sermon. Sermon is one of the most underrated players in the Pac-12. Linebacker for Cal. He's in his sixth year. He played four years at Washington before transferring to Cal. His dad's a defensive coordinator. He is a tackling machine. In 2021 and 2022, he had combined for 195 tackles through four games this year. He's already at 25. He's a beast. He is somebody who's just going to be running around the field. Number eight. Keep an eye out for him. He's going to be doing all sorts of things defensively. He can do a little bit of coverage. He can do a little bit of pass rushing. He has figured that out during his time at Cal. He wasn't really an outstanding pass rusher in his time with Washington, but uh, last year had three and a half sacks. He's got one this year. Like They're finding ways to be able to get him more involved. I, am, I, I wouldn't say I'm nervous to play Jackson Sermon, but... He is definitely the guy that I'm trying to find on defense. This isn't to say he's like Travis Hunter, but I'm also not saying he's not a good player. But if I'm Trenton Bourget, I want to see where number eight is on every play. That way I know, okay, that's where their best defensive player is. We're going to adjust accordingly. We're going to push the play this way. We're going to attack this, whatever. Figure it out identify where number number eight is on the field before you even get started, move on from there. He's not, he's not Deion Sanders or anything like that, but you still need to know where he is. Jaden Knott's going to break you on offense unless you find a way to stop him. Quarterback situation, who knows how that's going to end up going. But that's, that's essentially kind of where I'm looking at for Cal's players to watch in this game. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps you ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always Find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car to the MVP 
and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebay.com slash motors. eBay guaranteed fit, only available for U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Thanks as always for tuning in. Wherever you get your podcasts, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. It is now time for everybody's favorite part of the previews. The bold predictions and the score prediction. I teased at the top of the podcast that I am maybe like hopelessly optimistic about this game. I am. I, I feel like these are pretty grounded. I feel like these are pretty grounded. I do my best not to go too crazy. You guys will have to let me know if I've done a good job with that or if I'm really just out of my lane. But I do feel like these are probably my most grounded of the year. We'll go ahead and start two on offense, two on defense. On the offensive side of the football, I'm going to say Trenton Borgay throws two touchdowns in this game. He he was playing fine before he got injured against uh, Fresno State. He, he obviously threw the interception on the opening drive. He was injured shortly after that. But prior to that, he was six of eight. He was efficient. He wasn't taking too many risks outside of the interception. It was a bad interception. But he was he was managing the game. Hopefully, that's going to continue to be the case. I also take into account, like I mentioned earlier in the pod, that Trenton is familiar with his weapons. He's familiar with Jalen Conyers. He's familiar with Elijah Badger. They're going to figure it out. I expect those guys to be able to connect. Jalen Conyers, quite frankly, is a, is a ticking time bomb. He is going to explode at some point. There has been three games he's played this year. He's been relatively quiet in those three games. This is hopefully the game he explodes. I do think that he he is going to have a good game. I'm not saying he's a 100-yard guy, but potentially, which leads me into my next prediction. I do think that there is a 100-yard receiver in this game for the Sun Devils. I'm not identifying who because I don't know. What I do know is that Cal's passing defense, just like a run defense, is right in the middle, uh, 236 yards per game. I think that Borgay is going to be right around that mark. I think that to get to that point, he's going to be relying on somebody, whether that's Guillory, whether it's Badger, whether it's Conyers, maybe a sleeper like Geo Sanders or Cameron Scadaboo. Somebody is going to find a rhythm with Borgay. He's going to connect with them often throughout the game, and it's going to turn into a 100-yard performance. Maybe it's on 20 catches, but I do think that somebody does hit the 100-yard receiving barrier in this game. Flipping to the defensive side of the ball, I know that this is an offensive line that doesn't give up a lot of sacks, but I am saying ASU gets there at least once by Prince Dorba. He has been on an absolute tear this year. Three and a half sacks, leads the team. He has found himself in the backfield more often than not. He is, he's what we thought Clayton Smith was going to be, and that's not even a knock to Clayton Smith. He just hasn't been a hundred percent healthy dude. If Clayton Smith is what we believe he is and you have him and Dorba and BJ green, you're dynamic off the edge. But until Clayton Smith is a hundred percent, you've got Prince Dorba who has looked like a monster. I think that he continues really good play this week. And I think he gets home for another sack. Hopefully there's more than one, but I am predicting at least one and I'm predicting it's Prince Dorba. Final bull prediction. I'm going to say that the Sun Devils are able to hold Cal under 20 points. This would be a pretty good outcome for the Sun Devils. Cal hasn't necessarily been high scoring this year. Outside of last week's 32-point production against Washington, which you also have to remember they lost that by 27 points, Uh, their highest score was 21 points. And that was week one. Uh, Excuse me. They... uh, Oh, I'm totally reading that backwards. Please disregard what I was just trying to say. Cal is able to score points, but I do think that Arizona State's going to be able to find a way to turn this into a slugfest. The way that you're going to do that, though, is to find a way to minimize Jaden Knott. If they can do that, then yes, I have 100% faith that the Sun Devils can get this done. If they can't, then yeah, they're going to give up some points. I... 
totally embarrassing. Hundred percent read their uh, their their win loss scores wrong, which is where I was more confident with that. Maybe I'm not so confident in under twenty. I'm sticking to it just because I can. Final score prediction with them keeping it under twenty. I got ASU in this game, twenty to seventeen. Going to be a slugfest. I am. I am hoping that this defense is able to step up. They have been very good all year long. I know that the points per game doesn't necessarily reflect that, but if you watch the games, you know that the Sun Devils defense has played its hearts out. As long as the Sun Devils offense is able to hold up their end of the bargain, I think that the defense can go blow for blow with a good Cal, uh, a good Cal unit. This is going to be a good game. I could I could see this 2017 like I predict, or I could see this uh 35-31. Like it would not surprise me if this was medium high scoring. It wouldn't surprise me if this was low scoring like I have it. I'm sticking with low scoring. What is your guys' score prediction? What are your guys' bold predictions for the game? Do you want to make fun of me for reading the box scores wrong? Whatever you want to do, sound off in the comments on YouTube or hit me up on Twitter at Richie Bratz 36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. As always, though, I appreciate you guys for tuning in wherever you're getting your podcast. Hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. We're doing something a little different tomorrow since tomorrow is a day game. Following the conclusion of the game at 3.30, I will be posting a Locked On podcast for you guys. It'll be later in the evening, probably around the same time as this, around six-ish or so. I got to get home from work and get everything figured out. But we will have an episode tomorrow. It'll be instant, fresh take of what happened during the game. So make sure that you guys tune in. I will see you guys then. Till then, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Levels.